welcome to today's show. On today's show, we're going to discuss groundwater, surface water, and why they matter. Hmm, what is groundwater? Groundwater is water that moves through soil and rocks below Earth's surface. Groundwater comes from rain, snow, sleet, and hail that soak into the ground. Water moves down into the ground through cracks and holes because of gravity. Water passes between particles of soil until it reaches a depth where the ground is filled with water. Now let's discuss soil structure. The structure of the soil affects groundwater's movement. Three particles determine soil structure, sand, silt, and clay. Sand particles are large. They range in width from 5 one hundredths to 2 millimeters. A microscope must be used to see silt particles. They are between 2 thousandths and 5 hundredths of a millimeter in width. A special microscope is required to see clay particles. They are less than 2 thousandths of a millimeter wide. Soil type depends on how much of each kind of particle makes up the soil. There are 13 different kinds of soil. Porosity. Hmm, what is porosity? Groundwater moves through spaces between the soil particles. These spaces are called pores. Not all soil has the same amount of pore space. Porosity depends on the number and size of pores in soil. The pores in soil are all connected, allowing water to pass through them. This means that soil is permeable. How easily water moves through the soil is called permeability. It is the rate at which water flows through empty spaces, gravel, sand, clay, and dirt have very different permeability and porosity. Let's dive in deep within permeability. Pore spaces must be connected in order for water to flow throughout them. The rock or soil is then known as permeable. Sandstone is a great example of a permeable surface. If pore spaces are not connected, the object is said to be impermeable. Water cannot flow through the groundwater system. Granite is an example of an impermeable rock. It does not have many pore spaces. Clay has many pore spaces, but they are all not well connected, so it is not a permeable surface. Porosity versus permeability. Farmers must be aware of these soil conditions so they can determine the best way to grow crops. Builders also consider these conditions in the area in which they plan to build. Environmentalists watch porosity and permeability closely when there is a risk that a pollutant might be introduced into the groundwater supply. Hmm, what are aquifers and wells? Water will continue to soak into the ground until it reaches a layer of impermeable rock. Once water reaches an impermeable layer, it keeps the pore spaces in the layers above it filled. Water that moves freely in a layer of permeable rock is called an aquifer. Wells extract water from aquifers. Good producing aquifers are both porous and permeable. Now let's go back to groundwater. How do we use it? Well, you should know that half of America's drinking water comes from groundwater. It is utilized for crop irrigation, for industries, and for mining. Now let's discuss surface water. Surface water. Water is essential for all life to survive. Everything on Earth is linked to water either directly or indirectly. Streams and rivers move water across the land. Clouds transport water across the sky. Ponds, lakes, marshes, and swamps often hold water in place. Water is important as a foundation for life and for its habitat. When it rains or snows, some of the water that falls to the surface moves as runoff. It collects in rivers, lakes, and oceans. How do we use surface water? Well, we use surface water to generate electricity, for drinking water, for crop irrigation, for recreation, for manufacturing and industries. Now let's talk about the water cycle for just a bit. Groundwater and surface water are connected by what is known as the water cycle. It's also known as the hydrologic cycle. It describes the continuous movement of water above, on, or below the surface of the earth. What is the difference? Let's listen to the words. Groundwater is found under the ground. Surface water is found on the surface. Both are very important for life on Earth. 
Both need to be kept clean and both need to be conserved, which means that we need to use the water wisely. Let's talk about water quality. What harmful materials pollute Earth's groundwater or surface water? These are known as pollutants. If there is an oil spill or a pipeline burst, these are known as contaminants, and they enter the lakes, rivers, streams, and groundwater, taking decades to recover and restore the water quality in that location. Pesticide contamination of groundwater is a subject of national debate, and it's very important because groundwater is used for drinking water by about 50% of the nation's population. This especially concerns people living in the agricultural areas where pesticides are most often used, as about 95% of that population relies upon groundwater for drinking water. People formerly thought soil acted as a protected filter that stopped pesticides from reaching groundwater. Studies have now shown that this is not the case. Pesticides can reach aquifers below ground from applications onto crop fields. Image of contaminated surface water, accidental spills and leaks, and improper disposal. Garbage or litter that is not disposed of properly eventually ends up in the ocean. Reducing, reusing, and recycling are ways to make more room for landfills for trash. We must consider the future when throwing our trash away. Landfills of solid waste are one of the biggest sources of groundwater pollution. Fertilizers enter the groundwater in two ways. Rainwater into a stream as runoff. Leaching. Leaching is the downward movement of a substance through the soil. Phosphorus found in most fertilizers harms water by creating algal blooms. This process called eutrophication turns the water green clouds the water, causes odor problems, and depletes or takes away the oxygen that fish and other species effectively need, suffocates them, which contains disease-causing microbes as well as harmful chemicals. When sewage is not properly treated, it causes an ecological damage and a disaster with health risks as well as a massive economic loss. Instead of discharging sewage directly into a nearby body of water, it's better to let it pass through a combination of physical, biological, and chemical processes that remove some or most of the pollutants. Spills, leaks, or improper disposal of gasoline can cause contamination of soil, groundwater, and surface water, in addition to the air. Leaking underground storage tanks or pipelines can also cause the gasoline to easily enter surrounding soil and groundwater.